Customizing and formatting your project. This course thus far has discussed how to use Project 2016 to manage projects. We've discussed the tools and features that the program offers you to create, track, and manage tasks and resources. However, there's another facet of project that we need to talk about as well. That facet is the ability to customize the look and feel of the program to suit your preferences and needs. In this lesson, we are going to show you how to format elements on the project screen, as well as teach you how to create customized templates. In the Network Diagram view, which you can access by going to the View tab and clicking on Network Diagram, you'll see the little boxes that comprise the look and feel of it. This view uses different shapes to represent different task types. Summary tasks use a slanted box shape and include a plus or minus symbol. Whether it's plus or minus depends on whether subtasks are shown or not. Subtasks are in rectangular boxes. And milestones are in diamond shaped boxes. Project allows you to change the formatting by individual box or type. To do this, go to the Network Diagram view by clicking on the View tab, then clicking on Network Diagram here. You'll then see the Network Diagram like this. Right click on the task that you want to change, and then select Format Box. If you want to change all boxes, right click outside of the task box, and then select Box Styles. You'll see this dialog box. The preview section of the dialog box shows you the current look of the box, or the look of the box after you make any formatting changes. This allows you to see how changes you make in this dialog box affect the look. The Data Template section shows you what kind of box is currently selected. We've chosen a standard box. Let's click on the drop down menu for this section. You can change the type of box here. In the border section, you can change the border shape, color, or width. In the background section, you can change the fill color or pattern. Click OK when you're finished. In addition to changing text boxes, you can also change the layout of your view. Of course, your options in changing the view vary greatly from Network Diagram to Gantt Chart to Calendar. To view the Layout dialog box for any view, right-click in the Work area of the view, then select Layout. We're going to view the Layout options for Calendar View. Click on the Calendar button here under the View tab. Then right-click anywhere in the area here and select Layout. Here is the Layout dialog box for Calendar View. These options are self-explanatory. Using a sort order, attempting to fit as many tasks as possible, showing bar splits and setting an automatic layout. Click OK when you're finished. Now, let's switch back to the Network Diagram view. You can see the Layout dialog box for the Network Diagram here. Again, although there are a lot of options in this dialog box, they are self-explanatory. To view the layout options for Gantt Chart View, go to Gantt Chart View. Right click inside the chart area on the right, and then click on Layout. The settings in all three dialog boxes allow you to change how the elements are arranged on the page and how dependency links are shown. You could spend time playing around with the options for each view, and you are certainly welcome to do that. However, for now, we are going to present the formatting options given to you with each view and explain what it does. These are the formatting options given to you on the calendar view. For example, the Use Current Sort Order means that it uses the latest sort order applied to tasks. We also have the Attempt to Fit as Many Tasks as Possible, Show Bar Splits, and Automatic Layout. On the Network Diagram view, we have Layout Mode Area, Box Layout Area, Link Style Area, Link Color Area, and the Diagram Options Area. In the Gantt chart view, we have the options for links, date format, bar height, 
Always roll up Gantt bars. Round bars to whole days. Show bar splits. And show drawings. To modify grid lines, go to the area of any view that contains a grid, such as in Gantt chart or calendar view. Right click in the chart section here, and then select grid lines. You'll then see the grid lines dialog box. In the lines to change list, select the grid line that you want to change. In the normal section, type and color a layer to select line style and color. Add interval allows you to use a contrasting color at various intervals in the grid so that it's easier to read. Click the OK button when you're finished. You can use the drawing tools to draw images in the chart area of the Gantt chart view. To do this, go to the Gantt chart view, then go to the Format tab. Click the drop down arrow below the drawing button. The button is on the far right here. Choose what shape you want to draw from the drop down menu. Then click in the area of the chart where you want to add your drawing and drag your mouse until the drawing appears as you want it. Then release the mouse button. We already learned how to use a filter earlier in this course. However, you can add filters to any bit of information. To create a filter, go to the Gantt chart view. Display the fields or columns that you want to filter. Click the arrow for a column header that you want to filter. We're going to select task name and put a filter on it. Click filters here to see your filtering options. Select the criteria you want for the filter or click on custom. When you click on custom, you'll see this dialog box. In this box, you can set choices that are specific to each field of information. Then click the OK button when you're finished. The filters we've just used are pre-designed filters. You can also create your own. Here's how. Go to the View tab, and then go to Filter in the Data group. Select More Filters from the drop-down menu here. The More Filters dialog box will appear, as you can see. Choose either the task or the resource to let Project know which list of filters that you want to include your new filter in. Click on the New button. Type a name for the filter in the Name field. By default, it's set to Filter 1. Click in the first line of the field name, then click the downward arrow to display a list of your choices. Click a field name to select it. Repeat these steps for the Test and Values column. The test means that the condition must be met. And value is a value that you enter such as a date or cost, or a predetermined value such as a baseline cost. If you want this filter to show in the menu when you click on the filter button on the formatting toolbar, check show in menu at the top right hand corner of the dialog box. Click on save once you're finished. The group feature allows you to organize information by certain criteria. To apply a predefined group, Go to either the Resource view or Gantt Chart view. We are going to go to Gantt Chart view. Under the View tab in the Data group, go to the Group By and click on the drop down arrow. Then select your criteria. You can see that tasks have then been grouped based on your selection. To remove the group, click on the drop down arrow next to Group By again, and then select No Group. A custom group has three elements, a field name, a field type and order. An example would be if you created a group that showed the field name and field type in a certain order, descending or ascending. A group that was created to show tasks in descending order would list tasks in order from the longest to the shortest duration. You can also control the font that is used in the different groups or the font color. To create a custom group, select more groups in the group by drop down menu. You'll then see the More Groups dialog box. Select if you want to group by task or resource, then click on New. Now you will see the Group Definition dialog box. Name your group, then click on the first line in the Field Name column. As we did with Filters, a down arrow will appear. Select a field name. Repeat these steps for the field type and the order. 
If you want to add more sorting criteria, click the row titled Venn by. You can keep adding criteria for your group by doing this. You can also check to have assignments, not tasks, grouped by clicking the group assignments. In the next section of the dialog box, you can specify the font, the background color for your cells, and the pattern. If you click the Define Group Intervals button, you can set a start time and an interval. For example, if the group by criteria is standard rate and you select an interval of $10, your groupings will be in $10 intervals with $0 to $10 in one group, and so on. Templates are simply files that you create and save that have certain settings. Just think of a website template. More than likely, you've used one before. The template has text and picture fields created for you, and also some formatting. It makes it a lot easier. So will your project templates that you create, because you can save your own settings. Any template you create will be saved as a project document. You can save any of your projects as templates. This is especially handy to do if you use a lot of the same tasks over and over in different projects. In addition to tasks, a few extra things can also be saved in projects. All the information for each baseline, which we've learnt about in this course. You can save actual values, rates for resources and fixed costs. To save a file as a template, open the file that you want to save and then go to File and then Save As. Choose a location. At the moment it doesn't matter what location you pick initially. In the Save As type list, select Project Template. Then browse to where you want to save it, and click on the Save button. When you do, the Save As Template dialog box appears. Put a check by the items that you do not want to save in your template, then click on Save. The file is now saved as a template with the MPT extension.